Hey there everyone, welcome to Folding Ideas in the second part of our discussion of source code. So now this week we're going to do a little bit differently. We're going to try and do it, you know, just, just a bit off the cuff. What we're going to be looking at here isn't so much something that you really are going to get from the text, it's more something that you've got to You've got to dig in a bit and make a bit of speculation. You know, we're just going to have some fun. So this is the dark side of source code. So last week when we were talking about source code, we spent most of the time talking about Captain Coulter Stevens and how he fits into everything. We actually need to talk about someone else, Sean Fentress. The ending of source code is more or less a happy one. You know, boy gets girl, they walk off into, well, not the sunset, but they walk off into the, the they stand in front of the cloud gate, it's giant mirrored sculpture. It looks cool. They get to do their little thing and then, and then comes the ending, and this is what we didn't actually talk about, but while he was on the train, after he stopped, uh, after he stopped Derek Frost, he called his dad, but he also sent an email, and he sent an email to the captain. Crap, what's her name? Crap, crap, why don't I remember this? Goodwin. He sent the, uh, he sent the email to Captain Goodwin. Well, not, not the same Captain Goodwin that we were hanging out with. He actually sent an email to the Captain Goodwin of, of this universe that he's in now, or this reality. See... With the ending of Source Code, what happens is there's the whole moment where Goodwin shuts off his life support back in uh, back in the main reality, and he keeps going. And this basically this confirms that in fact Source Code does does actually transfer between between solid realities. These realities don't just exist within the eight minutes of Source Code. They are completely different timelines that are self-contained. They exist, and so. He's sending it off to this alternate universe version of Goodwin, and, and this version of Goodwin, this universe is Goodwin, they also have a source code project, and they have a Coulter Stevens who's also in, you know, he, he also got blown up in Afghanistan, and he's plugged into a machine. This creates some interesting moral implications. You see, for almost every version that was created, almost every universe that was created, things didn't really change all that much. In Reality Prime, obviously things changed to identify Derek Frost as the bomber, the white panel van, and he got the, he got the license plate number and all of that stuff. In all but two of the other ones, things didn't really change. I mean, they went poorly, but everybody died on the train, except for two. And things don't really work out too well for, uh, for the girl, because they get off the train, he takes her off the train and then dies but he doesn't just die like he he gets hit by by the cargo train that's coming the other direction you know he's he's down on the tracks and he's like uh, uh i can't get up and then the train and she's all like ah, no get out of the way and he's like what and then he's like oh no train bam so so in this universe which keep in mind is its own continuity He's actually made things worse for this girl. I mean, sure, she's still alive, but before he died, before he got hit by that train, he told her, like, hey, crazy crap is going to go down, and, like, there's going to be all kinds of, like, messed up stuff happening, and I can see the future, and just trust me, like, I've got a really bad feeling. So he tells her, I've got a really bad feeling. We should get off this train. And then, you know, six minutes later that train blows up and so now this woman and and this is kind of where we've got to go back and we've got to start talking about we've got to start talking about the teacher we need to address this whole thing with sean fentress so so let's look at this girl and let's look at her relationship to sean fentress so sean fentress was a teacher and these two are colleagues of some kind now she just quit her job and is moving on from a relationship and is trying, you know, is making some big life changes. But they know each other and they're good friends and she's got a, she's got a huge crush on him and she's been waiting forever for Sean, not Coulter, to ask her out for coffee. She wants to go on a date with him, but she's waiting for him to make the first move. So they ride the train together all the time and they know each other really well and they're good friends and she wants to get it on with him. And then all of a sudden he starts acting a little bit differently and he's like, Oh, I got this crazy feeling. We need to get off this train. And then and then he goes like absolutely just ape nuts and attacks this guy. He stalks him around the train station for a bit and then assaults him. A train blows up 
and then she watches her she watches him get hit by a cargo train like feet away from her i'm not going to show you a video of what that would actually look like but uh needless to say that's not gonna be pretty this woman is now like quadruple traumatized in her universe her friend just told the future her friend just died in front of her she narrowly escaped death and now the city that she lives in is going to be nuked in like you know a, a few hours like later that afternoon her hometown is going to get nuked and and that's just gonna like she's she was better off dead so you've got that that universe ends up being you know i mean it doesn't really go all that different but her life uh gets <laughs> her life gets a little bit a little bit messed up okay so the big one is of course the one at the end of the movie this is not a happy ending okay first let's talk about the moral implications of this sean fentress died on the train and the source code project essentially allows them to take someone else's consciousness you know what let's just call it a soul we're just going to use the word soul here and we're going to say that source code lets them take someone's soul and move it into another person's body so they've taken captain culture stevens and they've they've moved his soul into the body of sean fentress so at that moment sean fentress as a as a personality and as an identity cease to exist his body is still around and people still know him but he as a person is not there this person is for all intents and purposes now captain colder stevens where this goes bad is is basically the next day he's learned a little bit about her and he's learned enough about their situation that he's able to converse with her about their their immediate circumstances but there's a ton of other things that he doesn't know so there's all this stuff that sean knew that he's now gonna have to just fake his way through. He doesn't have the benefit of repeats anymore. He's not in a game anymore. He's now back into the flow of normal life. He doesn't have the chance to like, be like, oh, well, what do you think about this? You know, he doesn't have Groundhog Day mechanics here. He doesn't have video game mechanics. He doesn't get redos, do-overs, or, or second tries. If he doesn't know something, people are gonna notice. You know, it has the same kind of dark implications as Groundhog Day and Back to the Future because we now have this guy who is living a life that he knows nothing about. Now this is actually almost worse than Back to the Future. You know, Back to the Future has got some serious problems because Marty McFly, he suddenly, everything he knows about his world is different. Everything he knows about his family, he has all these memories that, that basically don't exist. But he's still him. In this case, a person's personality has completely altered overnight. So the next day is when this seriously, seriously kind of kind of goes to crap because he can't just not go to work. Sean Fentress, he's a teacher. I mean, it's implied that he's teaching at like a university or a college level. You know, one of those levels of education where you're expected to know what you're talking about he's not just a high school teacher and even if he was you know there there's a certain level of he doesn't know his family his co-workers where he lives what his car looks like it doesn't even take until the next day it's going to be later that day when he goes oh crap i i don't know who i am do i have like deadly allergies what's my mom's name there's all of these questions about He's a trained soldier who's now living the life of, of a history teacher. This is not going to go well for him. You know, we saw a lot of this Marty McFly, like, he had all these fake memories. Marty was kind of, he was screwed in that he had all of these fake memories that didn't, that never happened or didn't exist about people who, who are like completely different personalities now. But Sean with Coulter Stevens living inside of his body, Coulter can actually, like, he's got buddies that he can call up. He can call up people and be like, yo, I know you, and they'll be like, and he's got these details. He knows these, these people's lives, and he can confirm just about everything that, that he now believes. But let's say hypothetically, you know, like, if he had a house and he had a, a spare key, like, hidden in the back garden, well, okay, I guess, I guess he was called he was dead and they reported him dead he knows where that key is and he can be like hey let, let's let's go visit this place that i know intimately we're gonna go into this backyard i'm gonna find this key and it's gonna open the door and i'm gonna be able to tell you like 
everything that's inside this house. And they're gonna be like, how do you know all this stuff? And he'll be like, I don't know. And they'll be like, well, why you're, you're Sean Fentress? I mean, like, look at your ID, your, your mom, everybody knows you, you're, you're Sean Fentress, but you don't know any of our names. You, you know nothing about your job. You don't, you know nothing about your own life, but you know all this other stuff. Um, witchcraft. Every time there's something where they have to pull out source code, it's probably inevitably going to end with a Coulter Stevens not dying in the event. You know, succeeding in some way and managing to keep himself alive to the point that he has now taken over that person's existence. After 10, 10 or 7 or 30 some, like, a, a huge number of successful source codes, you're going to have, like, just as many Coulter Stevenses in the world. All of these Coulter Stevenses, like, trying to reconcile what, what happened in their lives and how each of them is like, yeah, I, I blew up in Afghanistan and then all of a sudden I was in this dude's body. You ate his soul and took his body. They'll, they'll need to invent an entirely new arm of ethics to, like, deal with that. So that's Source Code, and that's it for Video Game Movie Theme Month, which only took us a mere, um, well, seven weeks. How, how many, how many weeks are in a, a month? So that's it for this week. Tune in next week for something that we haven't decided, uh, just, just roll the credits.